So then they try to stall out our luggage because we weren't allowed to take our luggage down. The bellman had to take it. Our luggage was rifled through and robbed from the time it came down from the suite to the car. They kept trying to keep us there. I had to press the issue to get my car. And I'm like, y'all motherfuckers is doing too much. If I want to check out early, I should be able to check out early. Oh, well, this is only happening because you're checking out you know, early. What do you mean because I'm checking out early? If I want to check out fucking early, I should be able to check out early. Right. Right. You, you starting to make it sound like you're trying to keep me here. Is there a reason why you're trying to keep me here? See, there's a moment when North Philly just <laughs> kicks right in. I'm sitting there talking to the valet guy. Ma'am, I don't know why it's taking so long to get your car. It usually doesn't take this long. And I looked at him and I said, I want you to understand something. You getting me my car right now is good for you. <laughs> because if they come, I'm going to grab your ass and hold you close. <laughs> and you're going to get touched right with me. Now go get my motherfucking car, bitch. And you knew I wasn't playing. Oh, you don't want to get my car? When the motherfuckers come, you're going to be my shield, baby. Kevlar! Mm. Got my car. You were able to finally get to the luggage. He had to go and track the luggage down. Couldn't find the bellman that had our shit. He went on break. So he came up to the room. It took our shit to bring our shit downstairs to meet us in the lobby with the car. But while he took our shit, he went on break. <laughs> I made enough noise. We did what we had to do. And we got back in the desert. So I, I got to ask, when, when you speak your truth, does that make you not want to actually speak out and actually keep it as real as you kept it in these interviews? There have been days where I thought to myself, maybe it's just too much trouble. Oh. And then I remember, that's my fucking purpose. And that's their purpose. To make me as uncomfortable as possible. So I won't want to speak. That's the objective. So all I can do is make smart choices and believe that everything that happens, happens for a reason. Even if I lose my life, it was meant to be that way. Like I said, talking to y'all earlier about faith. Yes. What, we re what do I really believe in? I believe that everything that happens, happens within the will of God. Happy mm. Shabbos. I believe that everything that happens, happens within the will of God. That means everything that I've said, everything that I've done, everything that I happened, that has happened, that's about to happen, is happening as it is supposed to. Oh yeah, amen. For me to argue with that is for me to argue with what I really believe in. So, I have so to, yeah, uh, that's, that's that. So you mentioned Surviving, surviving Jaguar. Mm. So Ooh. I know. It's you want to like, know what's funny? Yeah, go I'm ahead. mad because I've been surviving me too. <laughs> right, all my life. So the first question is: You have not watched it. Let's just no. I've you, seen clips, but clips. I've never watched. It. Okay. So after our interview, um, you Stormy, uh, Tasha K, you, you know, mm -hmm. and then this uh, surviving Jaguar is a trailer comes out for it. It's coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you have wind of it that it was coming that you knew it was building? Because you had mentioned that there's a reason she has the numbers to the people that she got anyway. How does she get the X number? How does she get? I gave it to her. I texted mm. it to her. For You're what, welcome, bitch. Yeah, for what purpose? What purpose? What? So, as you see, what we were talking about in part one, Tasha K possibly have gotten numbers directly from Jack Bar Wright. And 
allegedly possibly family members. So she already has some contact prior. I don't know why Jack Rob would give her, her ex-husband a phone number, knowing that her ex-husband didn't have a good track record. See, that what don't make sense. But when you listen to what she says, it makes sense. That was too... Say, okay, well, let me just give you other people that could tell my story or? Have you ever heard of the saying, it's an old Chinese proverb, beating the grass to find out where the snakes are. You know, sometimes in still grass, everything looks normal. But if you just stomp or you throw something down, you'll say, Phew. You see that tip? Or even just the movement. You might not even see the snake, but you know that shit ain't moving by itself like that in, this, in that pattern. And at that point in time, I was doing a lot of that. See, I know my ex-husband is a narcissist. I know he's a liar. I know he likes the attention. <clears throat> but I was more interested in seeing what he had the balls to actually fucking say out in front. See, he lived off of me. He lived off of my fame. He made relationships off of me, off of my fame. I know he missed it. That's why for a while, I shut my shit down. Mm. You love me? Let's see what you fucking love. I'm gonna take all of this shit the fuck away. You love me? Or did you love what I could do for you? Mm. I'll never forget the first time I went to my dad when I was contemplating divorce. And I said, you know, I know this shit ain't working. I know it's not right, dad. I know he's the wrong one. But I feel bad because I made that commitment. I said forever. And I haven't been an angel. And he keeps saying to me, he can't live life without me. I said, and it looks so real, it looks so genuine. Am I just that cold-hearted? You know what I mean? That I, what am I missing? Because it's not adding up. My father looked at me, he said, baby, it's because he's not lying. He's telling the truth. He can't live this life without you. That nigga's nothing without you. And All right, so I just wanted to go in as we close off on this part. Women, when it comes to men and manipulation, this is a prime example. I have lived it. I have lived with a narcissist and a manipulator. We were in on and off in a relationship from the age of 12 all the way until I had my daughter and did a whole bid with him, okay? We're not gonna talk about that. But with that goes to say, I can stare in this man's face and he will say, I love you, I love you, you so beautiful. You the woman I need, I know you a good woman. Da -da -da -da. And that's what you, you the woman that my mama want me to marry. But then he would go and cheat with someone who I, I'm gonna just say me, categorize this bottom of the barrel. And when I looked into his eyes, I saw love and I'm like, he really means this. But what he really means is that he do have love for me. I am a good person in the person that he should marry. And his mama even thinks it, but it doesn't mean that that's what he was going to do. Or that wasn't his pure intentions because a person always have a pure intention. So after he said, I can't live without you, you're supposed to say, why? Why can't you live without me? Okay? And that would have got to the nitty gritty. So let's keep this commentary going. We're going to go into the second part where she talks about her son in the interview. And this is where I find it very disturbing. I really find... The behavior very disturbing. I'm very disappointed in Tasha K. If this is the truth, um, maybe because I have a soft spot as a registered nurse, 
Y'all know what I used to do and what I do. I'm still a registered nurse. I'm still licensed, but I'm not on the floor. I'm leaving it. I left it. We'll talk about that on my other channel. But with that goes to say, it deeply troubles me that she will definitely take the time to interview an autistic child knowing the mental capacity of that autistic child and how autistic children can be manipulated and how they aim to please. This is something that you find in autistic children and it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. That's just like a pedo pedophile or P manipulating an autistic person because they knew it was easy. That's wrong. That's wrong. So let's go into this because I'm going to start off by saying that. I'm going to start off by saying that. But you can't just take this nigga car. <laughs> I said, take a deep breath. Have you even thought of home? Which, by the way, little X on the side. I really didn't want a celebrity relationship. You can say whatever you want to say to me. Mm. It's easy to be real tough like this. Mm. I mean, like, it's insane. They harass people, they track people down, but the same thing happened to me with the fucking uh, wine gang, the yeah. winos. Like, how offensive is that, that I'm being hunted by a group that calls themselves the winos? That shit is like... <laughs> the winos. It's fucking awful. I'm being <laughs> hunted by a bunch of fucking drunk bitches who oh. drink box wine. Visually... That's not a good uh, visualization, and that's hilarious. Imagine getting chased down the street by a bunch of drunk people with wine bottles in their hand cursing you out. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And listen to a crazy bitch that's been caught in 80 million lies and owes Cardi B $4 million. The whole situation. The, so to, to, to segue back to that, your ex is on there, but also your son is brought on that yeah 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 for you and again i know you haven't went through and watched every minute of her but this probably had clips for you to see that your son is on that it was heartbreaking yeah but it not is. because i was worried about how it was making me look not at all see i know what kind of mother i've been you're the mother i know what kind of mother i've been so I wasn't personally offended for myself. I felt bad for him because I knew when I saw the way, the little clips that I had seen, I instantly knew he's automatic, un he's uncomfortable. He's talking from that stressed place. Like I know it, I know it better than anybody. I watched this human being grow up. I taught him how to walk, I taught him how to talk. I, I, I fed him. I, yeah, I potty drained him. I taught him how to stand up and pee in front of the toilet. Not even his father did that. You know, so it's, and I was married. So all that being said, like instantly, but I felt the same way when he was at the shooting. You know, when my eldest son was murdered in 2018, he wasn't allowed to come home for the funeral because his father was afraid that I was going to ask for change of custody. So he wasn't allowed to come to his brother's funeral. That's correct. And instead, my family members back home, which by the way, a couple of them, they were on the, the Tasha K thing too. Yes, yeah. A couple yeah, they all got together. Yeah, it's in the cousins and the... And decided to have... A, a, a mock funeral block party rather than coming to Texas. They was going to celebrate their way. His body was in Texas, but they having a little service in Philly. Gotcha. They were upset that I didn't fly him home. And I'm glad I didn't fly him home because you want to know what happened at that gathering on Hawthorne Street on the 5700 block of Hawthorne Street? Go ahead. Man, in Frankfurt, Philadelphia, some of my son's friends decided to come to the gathering. And the reason why I got my son out was because their enemies showed up and shot up the party, killed my son's best friend right in my son's face. 
my boy, my baby boy. If he hadn't been in Texas with me, he would have never seen that. He would have never been there for that. He had to go run under the table while his dad ran off to go get the car so they could speed off. And when I found out, because I got a phone call, and it was at the repast dinner that we were having, it was literally on the day of my son's funeral. I get the phone call. They shot up the block. They killed Giovanni, best friend. And I'm like, what? Who was there? Sam is gone. He all right. What do you mean, Sam? My son was there? He all right. He ain't, he ain't catch no heat. <laughs> he ain't catch no heat. Let me call my son because I know how he is. I know this got to be fucking him up. I call my son. The first thing, I'm like, are you okay? Are you, just tell me, are you okay? It's not dad's fault, mom. It's not his fault. It, 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 could've, it could've happened to anybody. It, it could've happened to anybody. I'm like, what are you talking about? I just want you to know, dad, it's not dad's fault that, that, that I saw the shooting. He, he didn't know it was gonna happen. It could've happened to anybody. I said, fuck all that. Are you okay? Huh? I said, take a deep breath. Have you even thought about yourself at all? Are you checking up on you? Fuck your dad. Are you okay? Give me the phone. Listen to me. I didn't plan this. We didn't know it was going to happen. Look, he'll call you back. All right, so... We're going to stop it right there and I'm going to go into some commentary because I'm deeply disturbed. I, I'm deeply, deeply disturbed. And I, I'm going to tell you why I'm disturbed. First and foremost, like I said, there's a difference between YouTube and the streets. And a lot of people on YouTube have not been in the streets. You don't know how it is to have guns being shot anytime throughout the day. And you just got to duck and roll on the floor and hope it's not coming from your direction. I'm going to really talk because as a mother, to lose a son, to lose any child, this is the reason why I left North New Jersey, because I know it was so many gang bangings, so many killings. They were knocking their little boys. My son told me in third grade that someone tried to ask him to get in the game. And I was like, yo, you need me to come? He like, no, ma, I got you. But he stood his grounds. The boys, you know, whatever, back down. And, you know, about a year or so later, I moved my son out. And I got myself over here in Georgia and the gang's coming over here. That's a whole nother story. But what that goes to say, the reason why I got so passionate with this is because not only did she have to go through her son being killed in from the streets in Philly, which is really similar to Newark, New Jersey. Secondly, her son, who she knows have a learning disability and a general disability, is being taken advantage of literally so she so have a funeral for her child in the state where he was already killed and then you think you're gonna take him back to the hood where you know he got beef probably nine out of ten that's why he's not in that state and then think nothing's gonna happen and this is when I say we have to draw a line between YouTube and reality because the people out here on YouTube just be talking and they never live this life and this is directly to Tasha K because I listened to you for years and you you told a lot about yourself. You you'll call the police. You'll do this. And I'm not with the snitches get stitches. But, you know, where I'm from, we handle things as a community. If we got a problem, we see these about these gangs about to get at it. We step out in the middle of them and we talk. We're not about that. We're not about that nonsense we take our love and our passion for our community and know we the ones that got the street under control a little bit we used to have stopped the violence protests so she knew not to bring her son back there she knew somebody would have been killed i mean that's common sense that's what you they do in gang wars especially if it's active so not only was her son taken advantage of from T Tasha K and brought on this platform, but I'm going to talk about him being taken advantage of from the family. 
another selfish act, another adult acting like a child, trying to prove a point, trying to make something, something when you could have just flew y'all just out to where he was at, gave him respect and kept it moving. But no, instead, the son who got murdered, now best friend, was touched at the funeral. And the same son that we're talking about, her son Sam, was, could have been touched. If they knew that that was his brother, you know, you never know. Because these people don't care. I've been in there. I've been in the streets. I've seen it. I've walked out of my house and two young boys having a shotgun to the other boy head right at four o'clock in the afternoon. This ain't no game. And for her to be able to walk with a smile and have some sanity, Jack Rock Right, I'm going to give it to you because I'll be on level 10 too. Listening to her stories, you y'all haven't endured it. That's why I have to give her respect. I not everything she do ain't perfect, and I really think some of the connections she make with people because she has a, a loving heart and kind of naive to relationships. I would assume so in reading vibes. I, and I'm saying that because we're gonna do our next reaction on um, Jack Rod Wright versus Nosy Ho. Bebe. But I love Jack Rob Wright. So talking to these two as sisters, the first thing I would say is one, Tasha K was unacceptable. It was totally unacceptable for you to bring her son on that platform. I don't care how many clicks and views it will get you. You have to learn how to draw the line. And I'm and I'm not going to throw low blows and say, oh, that's why you owe Cardi B money. But in a way, that's why. Because you don't know how to draw the line. You should have just fell back. I know you know Cardi B said half of the damn thing that you said she said. Well, you talked about. She talked about. Okay. And I'm going to respect that. Some people don't say, oh, no, that was defamation. In my eyes, I think Cardi B said that stuff about herself prior to Tasha K saying it. But the reason why Tasha K lost the case is because she was malicious and she kept on attacking her when she should have just fell back. Okay? So that maliciousness is what I'm, I'm really questioning with her integrity. No, I don't consider Tasha K a big leader in the black community, but I will say she's a big influencer on people's personality. And just as toxic as these stars are and the things they have done, the ex trafficking, the uh, sacrifices allegedly and all of that, it goes far. And they influence other people to act in the same manner that they do. You won't even notice that you're acting like the person that you're following on YouTube because you so you're watching them. It's everything that you put into you on a daily basis. That's why I monitor what I put into me. I'm listening to meditation. I'm listening to uh, some of the scriptures. I'm listening to some of the toxic stuff just a little bit because you got to know what's going on in the world. You're going to be caught off guard. But I think we have to pull people outside of this world. You can enjoy it a little bit, but know not to indulge in it, especially the ones who were calling Jack Rob right if you were some of the crazy fans. Where the fuck do you draw the line? These people don't know you. They don't care about you. They're using you. They're using you for their benefit. And us in the black community need, need to know this. This is not a good representative of womanship, of womanhood, of motherhood. Y'all can say everything and above about Jaguar Wright. She crazy, she did, she that, whatever. But the compassion and the words that I heard just now and watching that interview, I know as a mother, I probably wouldn't have had that much pause about my demeanor towards this woman. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong, Tasha. It's wrong. You have to draw the line in your job. It's malicious what you do. So I'm going to go back in and let y'all finish listening to what she say about her son. Because it's like, yo, as a mother, then you have to go back and address these issues. Because your son is on a national platform from somebody who don't care if he live, eat, breathe, shit, die. 
used them. And he got to live with this for the rest of their life. She probably don't even know half the stuff. Tasha K probably don't even know half the stuff that the boy said in the damn interview. Don't care. She got her clicks. YouTube has to be more than this. We have to use this platform to elevate, bring people to our own platform, get our messages out, and unite. But this right here is not acceptable. These are two powerhouses that can come together on terms that they they uh, agree with, and the rest they keep it moving. The jealousy, the envy, the setting up people, the taking people families and interviewing them is far beyond disgusting. And it is what it is. I'm just going to tell you that. And this is why I question who is Tasha K? Who are you? You know, I feel some type of way because I, I watch you and I really enjoy a lot of the, you know, celebrity exposure. Maybe I liked it because I grew up watching these people just like you, same age group. And you like, yeah, I knew something was wrong with them. Mm -hmm. I knew it. You know, we've been hearing about some of this stuff. Chill going to the, you know, satanic stuff. But we know what goes on. It's in the Bible and it's all other places, whatever. But with that goes to say, I really admire, you know, her as a black woman building her platform up from scratch. You know, enhancing her studio, doing her thing. But slowly destroying what she built because her your ego your ego is too big and you have to humble yourself in the eyes of the most high fuck the fans because you're going to have to read what you sow your daughter your son is exposed to the same thing that jack right Wright's son was exposed to who says that they won't do a live on you one year and, and she mad at you? And she come out and do something on you. You never know. It's unacceptable. So let's finish the list and we're going to close off. I just had to get passionate because when it comes to death, it comes to gang violence, it touched my heart. We're going to share some other stories about things I have went through. My family that's serving biz right now because of gang violence and making wrong choices. I'm pretty much exposed to a lot. And this is why I think we need more people on YouTube who have exposure and able to convert into a righteousness and have these real conversations. Because it's more than just entertainment. We could laugh, we could joke, ha ha, kiki. You know, I can make some funny stuff for y'all. I definitely am, but I'm definitely gonna hit y'all with the righteous. That's why we are on censor enlightenment talk. Now I want you to think about this: an autistic young man who buckles at pressure and crumbles in chaos not allowed to go to his brother's funeral, forced to go to some fake ass ceremony or slash block party, watches his brother who had just been murdered the week before, watches his brother's best friend be murdered right in front of him. And then he's spirited off and downloaded. If you talk to your mom, you make sure you let her know it's not my fault. The fuck? Yeah, so. No, what kind of fucking sick ass motherfucker call yourself a parent do you gotta be to know that your child who suffers and struggles from dealing with pressure and anxiety and all of this shit, he's been suicidal twice, he's had to be in a, it, it, I mean, he's been on suicide watch in a fucking mental, mental hospital twice before he turned 18. And all you thinking about is how it makes you look? Suck every dick that you lie about, bitch. And it is what it is. So this was a reaction video. So this was a reaction video from Grace Levi. 
And we had to ask some serious questions about some of the things that Jaguar Wright has addressed. It's very disappointing. I don't care. That's right. I'm going to be on these YouTube streets and be a little shrewd. Y'all got to get it together. Tasha K, you, you really have to sit down, meditate, and say, who am I? What do I want to represent? Where's my platform going? Because you're going, you're headed to the path of self-destruction. If I can sing that song for you, I'll sing it. Okay, here we go. Self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction. Oh, all right. So anyway, I want to send a shout out to the original content creator who actually did the full interview, which is two hours and 57 minutes. And yes, I watched it twice. And a few more times, um, the return of Jaguar right for interview, and that is real life production. So shout out to Philly. I know what you go through. I'm from Newark. It is what it is. We're all in different hoods from different places that has been impacted by poverty, destruction, racism. But we have to come together on a higher level. So I want to say thank you for being here with Grace Levi. You guys have been amazing. Hit the like button. Hit the like, like, and share. Make this go viral. Because we have to uh, elevate the conversation. Baby, Toxic Tasha K versus Jack Wright. We got we, we definitely got to get it together. 